Everyone, I'm with uh, Thomas Ross, yep. who just finished his debate with Dr. James White. I'm getting that right, right? It is Thomas That's Ross. correct, yes. yes. I just, Ever just, since I was born. <laughs> absolutely. Thomas, where are you from? I was born in San Francisco. I came to Christ the first time I heard the gospel clearly as a freshman at a secular college in Massachusetts. Okay. And we serve the Lord now at, uh, I moved different places, serve the Lord at Bethel Baptist Church in El Sobrani, California. And what was that last? El Sobrani, it's in the San Francisco area. Yeah, yeah. Okay. East Bay. So, so you ended up back in California. Then. Yes. Is yes. that where your family is and everything? Well, um, my family's not believers, but okay. we do help take care of my uh, one of my family members who's very elderly there. Gotcha. I understand. Well, we have several family members that aren't believers as well, and we yeah. continue to pray that God will yes. God will move on their hearts for Absolutely. sure. Well, I want to thank you for coming all this way and sharing with us today. And I, I, I want to start out by saying this is Conversation with a Calvinist. You told me earlier that you're not a Calvinist. I am. I, pr- I promise to not to try to convince you of Calvinism. You can if you want. It's fine. <laughs> uh, my, that's not what my show is about. My okay. show is just about meeting people, interviewing people, asking questions. And you were presenting the uh, side for the King James is superior to the uh, Legacy Standard Bible right. today. Mm-hmm. And what it really seemed to me to turn out to be more of, an, of a debate about preservation. Would you agree that that was the sort of what... what I think that what Scripture teaches about its own preservation is absolutely crucial to this issue and what whether you take those passages on scripture on preservation for what they say in context will answer the topic of the debate and i actually want to i think that's i think that should be what we focus on too like you know, some of the things that James points out in his King James Only Controversy book, some of the, you know, Ripplinger has acrostic algebra, a lot of this weird stuff. It's, uh, you know, it's good to expose that, but we really need to deal carefully with what God says about his own word. And if we believe those promises, we're going to recognize that the text received by the church is the right text. And that's, that's going to be establishing my proposition. So I wanted, and also the sword of the spirit to the word of God, the most powerful thing I can give anybody is what God says in his own word. So I want people to understand that. If they understand that, they're going to come to the right position. Okay. Uh, it's interesting that you would mention Gail Ripplinger. Uh, you know, obviously I'm familiar with her and also uh, Ruckman and some of the mm-hmm. other ones. How would you differentiate yourself from them? I mean, what would you say, what, what would you say is, I mean, do you support what they've done or what are your thoughts? Um, I think that Mr. Ruckman and Ms. Ripplinger are some of the best friends the Nestle Allen text has because by being so crazy and sit, like like Peter Ruckman, one, I, I, I hope I'll see him in heaven if he believes justification by faith alone, but you know, his alien breeding facilities by the FBI, he wasn't qualified to pastor, divorced multiple times. I, I, I tried reading one of his books it was so vitriolic, I couldn't get through it. I felt defiled reading his book. Um, so I don't think that he is really helpful for contributing to the defense of, of uh, the TR, and I think he puts a bad name on King James Onlyism. Uh, Miss Ripplinger, too, I wish that, I, I hope that I'll see her in heaven as well, but I, um, you know, James was correct that sometimes she was just taking stuff radically out of context. Some of her books, she says that you should translate foreign language Bibles from English. You shouldn't use Hebrew and Greek lexica. That's going to uh, cause the, the people of God to get worse quality preaching. It'll hinder their growth. When I was studying this issue out as a new Christian, when I stopped reading, the, I had four Bibles I was originally I was reading the New World Translation, the New Revised Standard Version, the NIV, and the King James. When I stopped reading the New World Translation, that was the first one to go. <laughs> then I stopped reading the New Revised Standard, and then I stopped reading the, new, the NIV, just read the King James. Uh, it helped my spiritual life. I was growing faster uh, because I had a more faithful translation. Um, if you uh, believe what Miss Ripplinger says about, you know, you shouldn't look at Greek and Hebrew, that kind of thing, that's not going to help you grow. And it also isn't what Scripture says. The most effective way, I believe, to help somebody who's involved in Ruckmanism is to show them the Bible doesn't say that God would have to restore a lost text in 1611. God says jots and tittles are preserved. The King James says your position is wrong. That's going to do a lot more for a Ruckmanite who, is, you know, wants to believe. He want, a Ruckmanite wants to believe. I've got God's word in my. I have God's word in my hands. That's a commendable desire, but we can believe that based on the promises of God without going into all this weird stuff. Okay, that, and I appreciate you recognizing the the that there are some. Uh, wackadoo <laughs> sure. stuff that's out there, just uh, like there is on James' side. Hey, I think I, I, I don't. I, 
not not an argument. Yeah. Uh, we, we, everybody Definitely. has some uh, some wild stuff out there. Sure. So with that in mind, um, is thinking about your position, which is not the position that I hold, but again, I'm not here to debate you. You That's just okay. you just spent three hours no debating. Um, I didn't put a question in the thing because I, I thought I might get a chance to ask you. Okay. So am I allowed to ask you one question? You ask me as many that, questions as you like. Well, a, a, again, not wanting to re, redo the debate. And oh, I know it's okay. Uh, I had more I could have said. Well, and I'm sure. And I probably said it too fast, too. Well, I, I was going to say, are <laughs> you? Um, how many debates have you done? I've done so James has done 170 something. This is like six or seven or something. Yeah, I was gonna say you you seem to have a lot to say. That, I did. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And the and the time limitations. I've done two debates, so I've only done, and both of them the time limitations do sneak up on you. Yeah. So I get that. I get that. Um, the uh, the question that I've asked and and I haven't really gotten a good answer, but that maybe it's just because I haven't spoken to the right person. Is in, re in regard to the Council of Nicaea, now Athanasius, mm -hmm. and and the Comma Johannian, which I'm not sure. sure if you even call it that. I, I don't want to. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, First John five seven. Yes. The, the passage, Yonian, which, yep, that's right. which uh, I have I've said that um, if this is a legitimate text, I know you believe it is, but mm -hmm. we'll just for the moment. If then certainly it would it would defend what we believe about the Trinity in regard to God is one in essence, three in person, because it says these three are one, mm -hmm. and that. Uh, um, but we don't see that text in the defense used by Athanasius and his writings and things like that. Can you tell me why you think that is? Well, they're actually, first of all, um, I may take a little bit different view on, on what the church is. I actually uh, am a you know, landmark Baptist, so I think that the true churches were separate from the Roman Catholic state church throughout the medieval period and that Baptists are not Protestants. Uh, I would agree with, say, Charles Spurgeon, who said that, there were, that we were reformers before the Protestants were ever born. So I'm very thankful that the Council of Nicaea got the deity of Christ right, but I think the true churches had separated from the Roman Catholic state church, or they weren't a state church quite yet, but they'd separated but before that time, uh, in the time of, of the Novation controversy. <coughs> so um, the well, fact with me that, say, the Waldensian Bible, pre-Reformation Baptists, had first and five seven in their Bible, I think is is more significant for me than somebody who takes a Protestant view of that history. I also would point out that Athanasius, for example, in John one eighteen, had you know a son. He didn't say only begotten God, but um, so those are some things I would say. Did they, as far as I can tell, at the Council of Nicaea, they did not quote first John five seven, but it also wasn't a Trinitarian council. It was specifically about the deity of Christ. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Is the Greek manuscript support for First John five seven you know overwhelmingly great? No, it's not overwhelmingly great. But um, I believe that there are sufficient reasons to keep it, though um, you could disagree with that and still come to the conclusion that I took in the debate. That okay. Well, that about. and that's fair, uh, and I appreciate you pointing out the landmark Baptist sky I, I wasn't aware of that and and that that would I would I, I would invite you to do a whole program on just that oh that'd be great yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna give you my card when we're done okay, maybe yeah. I can have you I sure. do it through zoom sure, uh, sure, we, sure. we can do conversation because I'm curious about that position I I uh, 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 the seminary that I went to sort of took that position. What was that? Uh, uh, well, Jacksonville Baptist Theological Seminary. Oh, yeah, I don't know. About uh, it, it's it's a very small seminary. I, okay. I call it Minister Trade School. It oh, wasn't, okay. It wasn't okay. fancy, but sure. the men love Jesus. They love the Bible. Amen. They love me. Good. And they taught me how to love God's Word. And, and, and Well, the Spirit did that. But I mean, and, and yeah. they taught me what it looked like to love God's Word. Good. So I'm thankful for those men. And uh, But I went back later, after having got my doctorate, I went back and helped t teach some classes and do some things. And one of the classes they had mentioned to me teaching was church history mm -hmm. and I take a little different perspective and I said well I, I could teach through the creeds and councils and they go nope <laughs> and, and I didn't realize the distinction was so massive so would you say that all of the creeds and councils then are are strictly Roman Catholic or no well I think if you read the church history of um, the guy after Eusebius uh, Oh, now his name is skipping my mind. Um, he continued, it's either Sozomen or um, Soccer. What did the, his name started with S. But he continued Eusebius' church history. And it was interesting, he records that in the period between 325 381, you had, you know, Arian emperors and you had Trinitarian, you know, Nicaean emperors. Mm -hmm. And when the nice pro Nicaea emperors were in charge. They persecuted the Arians and they persecuted the Anabaptists, the, the Donatists and Novatians. 
when the Aryan emperors were in charge, uh, or uh, they, the reason that the, the Catholic emperors persecuted the Novatians and Donatists is because they weren't Catholic. Yeah. When the Aryan emperors were in charge, they persecuted the Catholics and the Anabaptists because they were Trinitarian. You, he actually mentions that the Anabaptists had the same Trinitarianism as the Catholics. So I agree, and I think this is actually valuable. I can tell a member of the Watchtower Society, I didn't get the Trinity from a Catholic council. My people had the same Trinitarianism before this council and after this council, and I'm glad they got it right. But we got it from the Bible. So I'm very thankful for what they said about the Trinity, but I don't get and you know, we all know that the councils aren't fallible. Like at Nicaea, they said that the Father and the Son were one person. Now they, they defined the word uh, hypostasis wasn't defined it as strictly at that time. So sure. they didn't mean modalism when they said it. Yeah. But that was wrong. They should have said three hypostases, not one. So I'm very glad that at 381 they got it right. One usia, one essence, and three persons, three hypostases. But um, I would say I get my Trinitarianism from sola scriptura, only from the Bible. Nice, nice. Okay. Well, well brother, I want to thank you again. And I will ask one other thing. Because mm -hmm. you said earlier about Gail Ripplinger yeah. and, and about Ruckman, and if they believed in justification by faith alone, mm -hmm. then they're in heaven. Praise the Lord. So um, you would agree then, uh, I think. And I said if because sometimes some of those more extreme King James people are more associated with Baptist churches that are more uh, like with Jack Kyle, certain things where they kind of go after repentance. Ruckman didn't, but Ruckman's view that there are different ways of salvation, different periods of time, that's that's terrible. It's evil. Sure. It's unbiblical. Well, what I wanted to ask is you would agree then that even though you hold to a very strong view of what the Word of God is, mm -hmm. that if a person believes in justification by faith alone, According to your view, they could be wrong and still be saved. Absolutely. Okay. There's I, I, many things. If, if you couldn't be wrong on doctrine and still be saved, I wouldn't go to heaven. I'm sure there's many things I'm wrong on. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Thank you. I really appreciate it. it nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Too.